for the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. No sleep. It's the No Sleep Podcast. No Sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No Sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our first tale is entitled, Tales of a New York Subway, written by Colin Thompson and read by Ginny Sanders. A girl named Laura was traveling back to her apartment from work late at night in New York City. She was a little nervous about taking the subway so late, but she figured that there probably wouldn't be many people riding it. She decided against the cab and headed down into the subway. When she got on the subway, she was surprised to see that there were in fact three people already sitting there. Two large, suited men in dark sunglasses, and a little girl in between them. Laura was surprised to see such a young girl on the subway at this time of night, but based on how she was dressed in her designer sunglasses, Laura figured the men were escorts or bodyguards for the daughter of someone wealthy. Laura took her seat across from the trio. If anybody else gave her trouble, she was sure the strong men would help her out. At the next stop, a man in his late 20s or early 30s got onto the subway at the other end of the car from Laura. He was clearly very, very tired and quite unkempt. His shirt was wrinkled and definitely not clean, and he had what looked like a few days' worth of stubble. The man was exactly the type of individual Laura hoped to avoid on her ride home. Still, the bedraggled figure was certainly no match for the men who sat across from her. As the subway moved on, though, Laura noticed something very odd. The man at the other end of the car would glance up, look slowly at Laura, then at the men, then at the girl, and back to Laura. He did this several times before the next stop, at which point he got up and moved a few seats closer, to Laura and the trio across from her. Understandably nervous at this point, Laura was still confident the suited men could fight off the creep. However, the men didn't move even as the homeless-looking man repeated the process of looking at the other passengers before moving a few seats down. After several stops, he was seated almost right next to her, and yet she was the only one who seemed to be bothered. The suited man and the girl didn't move. Laura's heart pounded as she counted two more stops until her apartment. How much longer would the suited men allow the threat to go? With dread, Laura realized the subway was slowing as it approached the next station. The instant the doors opened, the sketchy man grabbed her around the waist and carried Laura screaming out of the subway. The man ran with Laura over his shoulder as fast as he could, visions of being robbed, raped, or murdered flashing through her mind. Eventually, the man set her down. He was panting. He quickly gasped out, Ma'am, I need you to calm down. My name is John. I'm a student at Columbia Medical School. I work with cadavers all day, and I guarantee that that little girl was not alive. 